I wanted to break my thoughts down into three different categories. Uh, and it was really funny when you did that because I had that too. Um, so the first is mindset and how to think about coming in a little bit more uh, spiritual, the spiritual aspect of that. Uh, and the second is social, so social life on campus, uh, social interactions. And the third was intellectual. Um, and so, and I tried to incorporate a lot of different religious aspects to this because I think, alhamdulillah, all of us are here because that speaks to us to some degree. Um, and just one thing, if I were you, I would maybe jot some of the things that resonate down, uh, especially if they're Islamic references. Because sometimes when we get busy and, and looking at, for example, the Quran or something, it's overwhelming. Uh, but there are a lot of things in there that can really speak to you when you're in serious moments of hardship or when you're really struggling as a student. And I tried my best to pull some of those out that I know worked for me. Um, but I, I want you guys to use those and, and put them in places for you to be, stay motivated. And I'll discuss a little bit more specifically about that. So um, the first thing in addressing the mindset, the, the, how we should approach school and the interactions that we have with everybody there. Um, my first point, under this first point, would be to def define what success means to you with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Islamic values. And I mean to really sit down with yourself uh, before we go back to school. I mean, we're all going back in the next few weeks, if not the next few days. Um, and I'm reminded of the hadith, in Allah subhanahu wa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves if a person was to do something that they would perfect it. And so we, and, and this goes back to what Omid Safi was talking about, in the sense that we don't strive to just be successful, we don't strive to just have the simple, happy life, but we strive to be great, and we strive to really make a change in the community, inshallah. So for us, to, for each of you, I encourage to sit down for a little bit and really put down the goals that you have for yourself. Um, first, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we have to um, excel in everything that we do, but also because we have a duty Seeing how much we've been given, seeing the opportunities that we, we have, the resources that, we're, that we've been blessed with, alhamdulillah, compared to so many around the world who can't pursue half of what we're able to and that we take for granted. Uh, and seeing examples of Sahaba who, there was one Sahabi who learned Hebrew and became the ambassador for the Muslim Ummah within two weeks. I mean, when we think about where we are with these kinds of things. Um, it's, it's really important to reflect on this and to take some time to really decide what you would consider su as success for yourself. And from there, um, to set tangible and measurable goals in breaking that goal down. So um, when you think of, oh, I want to end up here, and we break that down in smaller pieces and smaller pieces, and to eventually put that into your agenda or calendar so that you know exactly what you'd be doing. And Honestly, for me, it's gone down to the hour by hour where I, I know that, inshallah, today I'm going to finish this, 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 and, and you know that you know if you fall short, you're going to fix that. But you have an agenda, you have a plan, and you're not just going as the dead fish do, right, with the flow. Um, and so, particularly Islamically about that, I, to make sure you include moments of reflection in your schedule. This is something we all overlook. I mean we go about our day and then we forget that the importance of reflection and literally putting that down in your agenda. So maybe I, you can choose every Thursday night maybe when you're preparing for Jum'ah and maybe reading Surah Al-Kahf or something to put down a moment where you're going to sit and reflect. What did I do this week? What did I like? What did I not like? How's my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When did I miss my prayers and why did I miss those prayers and what am I compromising on that doesn't matter as much as what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us to matter. Um, so a few ayahs that would inspire me about in this regard is, one is, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So remind because the reminder benefits the mu'min. And that in the sense of not only each other to remind you know your fellow brothers and sisters, but to remind yourself um, because it's beneficial. The other thing is, it really scares me to think of an ayah in Surah Al-Kahf actually that, um, I'll just translate it immediately, but say, should I tell you about those who have lost in their matters or in their affairs? Those who have continued in this life and have you know, pursued that um, in this life, and they think that they're doing what's right. But, so the idea is that we can go on without renewing our intentions and without reflecting on what we're doing. 
and we could be leading ourselves astray without even realizing it in the small, subtle ways. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to say was, um, there's, a, there's an ayah in Surah Al-Hajj, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَتَكُونُوا لَهُمْ قُلُوبِ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا أَوْ أَذَانِ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارُ وَلَكَنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبِ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ So Allah SWT in this ayah is telling us that it's not, it's not the eyes that go blind, but it's the heart. And so when we don't take those moments to reflect and renew our intentions, we can fall into that and we might not even realize it. And that's the point, that when that's blinded, you won't even be able to notice that you're gone. Um, so overall in this point is to renew our intentions, to reflect and to put that in our calendar, to make sure that our relationship with Allah SWT is maintained. And that will ultimately help with all of the other issues that were well, that I'll mention in a second, um, <coughs> of the social aspects of college, the pressures that come up. When we have a solid relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will be able to prioritize him easily without having to feel the pressure to come um, to you know, uh, to give in to the pressure of whatever he may be faced with. Um, so okay, so I'm just looking at notes. Um, the other thing I would do with these verses, with whatever speaks to you to maintain a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is first I would set a, a central work location because one of the things that was very difficult for me was to find stability and to find focus uh, when you know there are so many libraries you can go to and you can study everywhere but to really have one place that you go back to will at least for me was very beneficial in making sure that um, I know what I'm doing and that I can get back into the mood of things. Um, and if you were to decide to set that location for yourself, whether it's the desk in your dorm or if you are local to be home, uh, to put those things around. I mean, literally write these ayahs or write these hadiths or the things that speak to you in motivating you spiritually and academically, uh, post them around your desk. Uh, put, you know, put them on your phone screen or something. These things really can make sure that, uh, help you make sure that you stick with um, what's right, inshallah. And so that was the first aspect. Um, the second would be prioritizing. And so the first I want to discuss about that is salah. I think that, I mean, nobody can tell you that something is more important than salah. And every single one of us in this room has prioritized class over salah time or maybe lunch or whatever because if I don't go to lunch now in these 10 minutes, I'm going to miss my next class. But it doesn't matter that I'm going to miss Salah. Or, so every one of us has done this. And I remind myself first and everybody else that la baraka Allah fi amalin akhara an Salah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not put barakah in what we do if we, don't, if we are late for our Salah. And it's really about prioritizing in our mind. Um, it's probably time. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll try to move fast. Um, but, yeah, basically, not only is it our duty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that our salah is prioritized, but we're putting ourselves in an illusion if we think that going to class over salah will make us more successful. Because Allah SWT, we're not going to be successful without the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, I mean, it's self-explanatory. And fajr is included in that, making sure we wake up. Um, okay, now I'm off track. Uh, all right. The other thing is to make sure that we're very comfortable with our identity as Muslim Americans. And that's something so easy to superficially dismiss. But once um, we know that we're, we're trying our best to be with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do, then we have nothing to fear. And one of my favorite ayahs, is definitely something that motivates me to do something regardless of the pressure is inna Allah la, inna, inna la So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the plural form and says, we don't put at a loss those who do what's best or do what's right in their deeds. Um, and so that's the idea, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't make us fail if we sacrifice for his sake. Uh, and that goes for the social pressures that we face. You know, people mentioned already the alcohol, the drugs, the sexual interactions. Um, all of those things are very real and we face them. And as much as we try to avoid them, they're possibly on our minds. So when, that's one of the ideas that really speaks to me in those times. Um, all right, and the, the last part about this is taking time for renewed spirituality. College is 
really, I mean, for all of us, as we know, it's a time when we're alone a lot. Um, it's about redeveloping that relationship where you're not Muslim because of your house, you're not Muslim because of your community, you're not even Muslim because of your parents, you're Muslim because of you and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we can really take the opportunity to run with that and to develop uh, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in college. And there's resources often for us to be able to do that. Um, and there's a hadith qudsi about the idea that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us and if we're able to develop that relationship, then he becomes the sight with which we see and the ears with which we hear and the hand with which we handle and the foot with which we walk. And if we ask for, and if we ask for something from him, that he would give it to us. So um, there are not only benefits in the, in the sense of the barakah that we receive in our lives from developing a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's ultimately the purpose of our life and the reason why we're here. So um, I'm just going to skip through a lot of this, but uh, the other thing would be social. I would, don't forget that it's the Muslim community on campus, the Muslim community around us is just as much of a responsibility on us personally as it is on the people who are doing it. So when we are involved in Muslim activism through the MSA or whatever, and we can always complain, that, oh, the MSA doesn't provide this, and the MSA is so much drama, and, but it's funny because we forget that. Who is the MSA? The MSA is the Muslim students, and we are the Muslim students too. So and trying to change the mentality uh, in terms of, instead of us complaining that, oh, this doesn't provide this for me, I'm the one that could be providing that for other people if I were the one to make the change. So I, the way I, I go about this is to make sure that I have one Muslim thing I'm involved with uh, to maintain my spirituality, an intellectual thing. So something maybe being part of a publication or something that helps you learn more, so researching and doing that kind of work, and a career professional kind of activity. So something that helps you with networking, something that helps you um, build some of your professional skills. Um, and the, I mean, I had so many things to discuss. Um, okay, the other thing would, the, the last thing I'll say, and then we can go back into a discussion, um, is the intellectual aspect. So remembering, when, when interacting with the Muslim community, remembering that we're not scholars ourselves, but we can definitely build ourselves to learn a lot more. And so I think one issue that was severe in my Muslim community on campus was the different madahib and the different discussions, that, the divisions that start to happen within the MSA of, oh, they're Hanafi, like they, we can't pray like that because whatever. I mean, j this is just ridiculous because we're trying to unite the Muslim community. We're trying to be um, proactive in, in developing our spirituality. And for whatever differences people are raised with, um, None of us are scholars to be pointing those out and trying to philosophize about what that means or, or building our egos and trying to just look like we know what we're talking about when it comes to Islam, when that's not the emphasized material that should, you know, that should really guide our lives. Um, the other thing is intellectually, and a very important thing for me to realize was that Islam is based on a number of ways of knowing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed us with a number of ways to, re to to come to conclusions about things, and reason is one of them, but intuition is another, our fitra is another um, associated with intuition. Even emotion is a way of knowing, and often clouds our judgment, but can often bring us to very um, sensitive decisions. So keeping in mind that the, in a college situation, it's often, uh, the other ways of knowing are often undermined, and um, that's an important point. Um, I, I just want to point out some resources for you guys that have really helped me. There's a book called The Muslim Student's Guide to University and Beyond by Id Idris Zahur. <coughs> you can literally find that in the Halalco bookstore. Um, it's been very good for me to just read sometimes and reprioritize the things I'm concerned with. Some of you who are dealing with like student loans, Muslim Matters published <coughs> something called A Muslim's Guide to Student Loans in the US that helps you minimize and eliminate interest in dealing with all the financial transactions. So I would really recommend that if you're um, someone who benefits from those kinds of things. And the last thing would be some du'as that are very beneficial for me. Um, so one is, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'a wa arina al-batil batalan warzuqna shtinaba. That Allah, please show us what's right and uh, grant us the ability to follow it and show us what's wrong and grant us the ability to stay away from it. That's very beneficial in college. So it's not even being able to stay with what's right and wrong as much as it is knowing what's right and wrong anymore just because it gets so confusing with so many different perspectives and people. 
the second dua I would say is Rabbi alhimni rushdi. Um, Allah SWT, may Allah SWT um, enlighten me or grant me with my maturity or my full capacity. Uh, and the last is uh, one that was mentioned in a hadith by the Rasulullah Ya muqallib al qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik. O turner of hearts, keep our hearts steadfast to your way. Um, and inshallah you guys can benefit from that. I'm sorry I couldn't share everything I had. I'm sorry if I went over time, but.